What's up my friends, back with another video for you guys today. Uh, today I want to talk about something that is uh, something I haven't discussed before and it's more on the editing side. So I know I really haven't done much about my editing process or anything and I know I mentioned before that I do send out my wedding stuff for editing but I do keep my engagement stuff um, for my editing personally and I also do extract the stuff I want to show in my portfolio. I take that out from the weddings, usually about 20 or 30 images, and I edit those myself. So, uh, a little bit of a dirty word, preset, okay? So, I was against using presets for a very, very long time. I thought that it was like a cheating thing, um, you know, basically just kind of like the idea of it left a bad taste in my mouth. So, then I was starting to do a lot more thinking about it, and basically, the way I feel about it is this. So. Back in the film days, the way that images were determined to look on the film, that all that stuff was done by artists, okay? The way that skin tones should look, the way that greenery should look, the way that skies should look on certain, you know, films like Velvia, you know, beautiful landscapes, and then you have Porta for, you know, port portrait. It was really, really good for people's looking, you know, for the skin tones and things like that made things look really beautiful. Though the way that those films were developed, they were developed through a chemical process by actual artists that work for places like Fujifilm and in Kodak and Rochester, New York where the factory is and and those those people were actual artists and they determined what they thought looked beautiful um, when they developed these different, you know, film types. And digital, once we moved over, the thing about digital is there's a lot of benefits to it, but the picture, the idea of, of digital, first of all, is developed by engineers, not artists. Okay, Those sensors and the way that they render light and the way that they represent color, that stuff was developed by scientists and engineers. It wasn't developed by artists. Okay, So what their main goal was when they developed those sensors was to represent the colors exactly in the tones exactly like it is in the real world okay so there was not any type of like you know there's a little bit like there's a little bit of differentiation in like the early sensors like the d700 the algorithm the way that it processes the the information off the sensor is a little bit different but for the most part digital really has to be edited okay stuff straight out of the camera it's not um it really doesn't have that certain something that you get with film that's like a, a an almost like a beautiful artistic type of feeling to it. Now obviously this isn't just the film. It has everything to do with a lot of different things like your composition, your lighting, and you know, right time, right place, things like that. But it was two different things. I mean they were developed, the film was developed through a chemical process by artists and the sensors were developed in labs by engineers and there the goal was with the digital is just to represent exactly what it is outside that you're seeing and no type of I don't want to say enhancement because I feel like that that's the wrong word but any type of like discernible difference between the different qualities of medium that you can use so when editing well first of all when you shoot digital you have to edit I mean, you, you, even if you're not doing heavy, heavy, heavy editing, there has to be some type of editing that goes into it, especially if you're trying to develop your style. And the one thing that I've noticed about photographers who really rise up, rise above, and actually stick out of the crowd rather than just kind of blending into the rest of the people, there's a consistency in quality of their work. There's a consistency of their, of the story of the way that they show the story. Like you can look at certain people's images and their portfolio really, really good. Like look at something like Jose Villa. Okay, oh my God, that guy's unbelievable. Two Man Studios, unbelievable. Eric Mastin, unbelievable. I mean, you can look at these, these, these people and these photographers and there's a consistency in their work. And so editing is really, really important. 
I'm the type of person I don't like to over edit. I don't think that uh, you know uh, you should establish yourself on like s trying to just go wild with with colors or something. Well, I shouldn't say you shouldn't, but that's just not my style. Like I think that that things should be beautiful. They should be not crazy uh, different than what it is. But there should be some editing and some type of like signature basically to the images. And so when I keep my photos that I'm going to present on my portfolio and I keep my portfolio images for my editing, uh, I do use one pack of presets, okay? And this preset was developed off the Porta, Kodak Porta film. And I, you know, I'm shooting people 99% of the time. So I, I mean, the, the way it renders skin color and skin tones is just absolutely beautiful. It's it's just like the best, man. I, I absolutely love it. So um, I use, I, I spent a lot of time looking around at different preset packs and, um, you know, I wasn't looking for anything that was, you know, cheaper and expensive or free. I wanted something that really, really represented the, the, the Porta film quality and really made it look authentic. And so I was able to find, um, through the same photographer, Eric Masson, he owns a, a company called Mastin Labs. And they have a couple different film packs, presets, and the one I use is the, is the Porta, Porta preset uh, pack. And it's, you know, only has three as uh, Porta, I think, 400, 160, and 800. And that's basically it. It's, you know, nothing crazy, but it just sets as a, as a baseline for my images when I edit them. And I think it really makes the images look very beautiful. Um, I don't think that using presets is a bad thing as long as you're not relying on them like totally like you're not taking shitty images and just think you're going to edit your way out of it and make a good one that's that's never going to work you have to start with a good image and start with a good composition and then try and have some type of style for me i like the look of film i really like it i mean if i could go back to shooting weddings on just film man i would absolutely love to do that but it's just not really practical nowadays it's very very difficult expensive and uh, my price points although they're high they're, they're not even close to what they would have to be if I was shooting film so uh, do the second best thing which is very high quality film packs and presets um, that represent film in a authentic way so I think you guys should check it out Mastin Labs um, they have a couple different ones they have like Ilford for black and white Fujifilm Velvia and they're not like 50 million different presets you're just like going through and just clicking off, you know, which ones. It's it's a certain type of film. It just pushed to different ISOs, a few different ones, and that's it. It's not like, you know, and they're very expensive. I mean, it was like $99, I think, for my, my Porta film pack. And really, there's only three three presets in there. But like I said, they're very authentic and good. Let me know what you guys think about using um, presets. I think it's... It, as long as you're very tactical about it and you're doing it for a certain purpose and you're not trying to edit your way out of a bad photo, like I said, I think that they're very um, they're very helpful and it's good to create a, a consistent style for your body of work. You know, when a client looks through my stuff, I want them to notice a few things. I want them to notice that there's connection. I want them to notice my use of lighting and I want them to notice that it's a it's it's a consistent like there's a consistent feeling they're not just all over the place you know the white balance is different on every single photo the colors are different on every single photo I want there to be a consistency of the story and um, that's why I think that you should find out what type of film you really really like and then use that you know and just and just use that one type of film and put and use that in your portfolio and see how you can integrate that and, um, I think it's a very, very smart move for a lot of us nowadays. So let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know if you guys use any other presets or if you have experience with the Mastin Lab ones. And uh, until the next video, guys.